nutritionist here at the Country Way. And I'm Jamie, also a holistic nutritionist here at the Country Way. And um, we're here to talk to you guys today about sex and hormones, mostly in relation to February being a heart month, yep. but also Valentine's Day because mm -hmm. it's love day, yep. love making day, all of those things. All of the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we also have some yummy, yummy licorice tea today. Mm -hmm. Sophie, would you like to talk about licorice tea? I would. Tea? So we're drinking licorice tea today because in honor of the hormones and hormone health, licorice tea is wonderful for helping with hormonal balance. Um, it also is really great for your digestive system as well. So it helps with healing that, um, balancing the hormones. So helping you to just feel overall kind of rejuvenated, chilled out if you're feeling stressed. Um, yeah, and it's delicious. It's really good. Seriously, we're drinking the Yogi Egyptian licorice. So if you haven't tried it yet, highly recommend it. Very good. It's also a pseudo adaptogen herb. It's not technically classified as adaptogenic because it doesn't meet every single criteria. Mm -hmm. um, but that essentially means it helps with your adrenals, helps your body manage and deal with stress. And I know that I feel better when I drink it on a regular basis. Yeah, me too. Totally. Also, it's just like a warm hug for your body. Yeah, it's so it always helps. <laughs> Especially in this like frigid February. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, we're pretty excited to talk about hormones. Um, we've got quite a few kind of things we're going to cover. We're going to talk about um, how hormones can become in balance. We're also going to talk about um, signs and symptoms. Signs and symptoms, yeah. Uh, sometimes hormonal imbalance can lead to more chronic conditions. Um, so we're also going to kind of touch on that. And then we're going to go into talking about different things that you can do to balance your hormones and kind of reset that and also boost your libido which is super great for yeah. valentine's day and we have a few products as well that um are helpful in the bedroom so we can show you yeah. guys some of those too and take you through them so how many people do you deal with on a regular day in the store that uh have hormone issues so many honestly so many, like right? so many i think that so like it's not just me yeah a lot of people really like the biggest one is definitely low libido. That's like a huge, huge one. And also stress, like so many people come in and they're just so stressed out. They're not sleeping through the night. They're waking up at like three in the morning. Um, you know, their thyroid is all out of whack. So it's a lot. <laughs> Period problems, yeah. menstrual problems, um, menopause yeah. problems are a huge one that we see. Massive, all yeah. All the time as well. Yeah. Um, so the cool thing is that all of these are related and can generally be taken care of in the same way. Obviously there are some specifics for different issues and for you know, male and female and those types of things. Mm -hmm. um, but it all just comes down to balancing the hormones. Yeah, it really does start there. And so different like signs and symptoms that you may notice that are signs of that hormonal imbalance and you know, it can be starting, like I said, with something as little just being stressed out. Different signs and symptoms may include, there's a huge range, we're gonna cover hopefully most of them, but infertility <laughs> is a big one. Uh, period problems, as Jamie just said, uh, having severe cramping, uh, hormonal acne, uh, depression, anxiety, uh, weight gain or weight loss, um, insomnia, uh, low libido, as I already mentioned, uh, changes in appetite, digestive issues, hair fatigue, sitting, fatigue, yeah. irritability. irritability. Um, yeah. Depression and anxiety yeah. are hormonal issues as well, or can be hormonal issues as yeah. well. Um, cravings, digestive yeah. issues, so digestive. Like gas and bloating as well. Yeah. Um, basically, everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's, there's so many, honestly. And, basically, everybody. And you know, you might hear this and think, like, oh, I have like one or two of those things, like, oh no, I'm hormonal imbalanced. But don't worry, because there are things that you can do that are very easy to get it back on track and a lot of us go through phases where hormones are imbalanced for a period of time and then you know we can easily get that back on track using our diet and you know how we manage stress and the things we consume so mm -hmm. things that cause this which i think is also important to mention because there's so many things in our everyday lives that can cause hormonal imbalances uh, one of them which has become in the forefront of our lives every day is bpa we are seeing all the time 
all kinds of cans and plastic and everything that always says BPA free, yeah. BPA free, BPA is a huge hormone disruptor yeah. in our system. So it's something to be super conscious of if you, especially if you know that you have hormone imbalance to begin with, mm-hmm. um, and to keep away from your kids because you don't want yeah. to start them off yeah. with a hormone imbalance from the get go. Yeah. Obviously that's an issue. And like plastics in general, like while we're on the subject of BPA, yeah. like plastics in general, like if you have like plastic containers that you've been like throwing in the microwave to heat up food or you yes. know, things don't like that, don't ever microwave. put plastic in the microwave. Get some good glass <laughs> containers, invest in some good containers. Mason jars, they're leak free, they yes. seal really well. I've honestly put like everything in mason even jars. Even just regular plates and yeah. bowls like your uh, porcelain or ceramic. Yeah. Just put those in the microwave. Yeah. Don't put plastic don't ever put plastic. in the microwave. Wave. yeah <laughs> terrible and all of those hormonal like like hormonal dis- like not all of them but a lot of the time like just something as little as that can really have a big impact when you're doing that every day and you're almost like taking in like little traces of the toxin every day it can really have a big effect in the long run it can and be not stored to, not to mention the things that come in our food too right so yeah. you're microwaving maybe some not so great food in that plastic so then you're yeah. getting the hormone disrupting toxins from the plastic but also possibly hormone disrupting toxins from your food so um, all kinds of packaged foods are like dirty conventional food that has um, your pesticides and herbicides and fungicides and all of those things Mm -hmm. that are also hormone disruptors yeah so it's important to look at your food sources as well yeah and know know where your food comes from where your food comes from if you can get organic yeah go organic (laughs) yeah that's a big one yeah so environmental stuff is definitely and also while we're on that subject too health and beauty products Mm -hmm. um that's a big, big hormone disruptor. So if you're, you know, getting, uh, you know, a lot of different things throughout your daily routine or while you're in the shower, like a lot of those chemicals in shampoos and like soaps and body washes and blah, 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 all the scents and stuff, those can really have a big impact too on disrupting. Cleaning products. Yeah, I mean, yeah, cleaning products. If you're cleaning your kitchen counter or bathroom with, you know, heavily toxinated things and then, oh, you make a sandwich on your kitchen counter, then where is all that going? Eating those toxins. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's super important to be aware of for yeah. sure. For, for sure. sure. Uh, and then stress. stress. I think stress is probably the biggest one. Stress is uh, huge. Stress is basically can cause any sort of disease in the body and yeah. we are all affected by it. Uh, and I think probably also one of the most common conversations I have with people in the store is about your adrenals and yeah. your stress for your stress response and all of that because your adrenals get fatigued with obviously stress but also things like drinking coffee every day oh or, yeah uh, <laughs> and I'm a coffee lover so I can feel it when I've had too much yeah yeah because it, yeah. it sends your body into that stress response you send mm-hmm. out your um your adrenaline and you're getting the sh- the sp- blood sugar spike and crash and it's constantly your adrenals that are pumping out those hormones yeah. to send your body into that response yeah and once your adrenals get fatigued then your thyroid can get fatigued your sex hormones can get fatigued you can yeah. start getting um mental hormone problems as well yeah right? like brain hormones yes yeah. so, so with the depression and the anxiety and yeah so it's always so it's always like to manage st- stress. yeah stress is like the number one thing and if you have like you know uh, like thyroid issues or you know like you know whether it's any other hormonal issue a lot of times it's linked back to stress like it all yeah. starts with with that cortisol hormone yeah so, so getting your adrenals managed, managed first managing your stress response so yeah. incorporating things like meditation into your day yeah or just if you feel yourself getting stressed out stopping for even if it's 30 seconds and taking a few deep breaths yeah or cutting back a little bit on coffee, on coffee. <laughs> i know i, I, I hate saying it i hate saying it because i know how much like i love coffee but it does make a huge difference you know just limiting mm-hmm. that caffeine and you can drink other d- delicious teas Tea. too like this yeah. which is benefiting your body absolutely so, yeah. yeah give your body the nutrients it yeah. needs to yeah. um so nourishing your adrenal glands is a huge one yeah making sure your adrenals so that the rest of your hormones can actually fall back into balance as you balance your adrenals as well. Yeah. And that's like super important too if you are like 
you know, if you're a young female and you're watching this and you, you know, you're a student uh, or whatever it is and you're, you're dealing with a lot of stress through school and then in turn that's also creating like a snowball effect on your, uh, like your estrogen and your period hormones. So that's, it, it really all ties together back to that stress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. then, of course, fatigue, not sleeping properly. Yeah. Which a lot of times comes with adrenal stress. fatigue as yeah. well and stress. Um, yeah. But that further throws off your hormones. Mm -hmm. um, over exercising or mm -hmm. under exercising, for that matter. Yeah. Um, a lot of times you see, especially period problems in like really active young girls. And yeah. Who um, maybe are like have not, not enough body mass on them, uh, mm -hmm. and they're exercising to the point where like they their body can't support them being able to reproduce so yeah. they stop having periods yeah. and that can cause a whole lot of other problems and then at the opposite end of the spectrum too being yeah. overweight because your fat cells actually produce estrogen mm -hmm. so being overweight causes this estrogen influx in your body having too much estrogen yeah. and this goes for men as well a lot of times oh, lower totally. testosterone levels can be from having this excess body weight your body can actually converts testosterone your fat specifically converts testosterone into estrogen yeah. So that lowers your libido. That oh, yeah. throws off. That throws major off a lot. Yeah. So yeah. like experiencing things like erectile dysfunction in overweight obese yeah. men is is very issue. common. Yeah. And with that said too, like uh, while we're on the subject of men and you know having erectile dysfunction problems, uh, the heart is huge. Like really looking at the cardiovascular system because a lot of people will just try to like compartmentalize the body and men especially. Like we get a lot of men coming in here and they don't really realize that if you are having circulatory problems down there, that can really be a sign of circulatory problems in the whole body. Everywhere. So taking care of your cardiovascular system, you know, um, eating a bit better, trying to improve your diet exercising like that's all stuff that is really important and the body just doesn't function like that it's not like it's one thing and that thing only it's everything if something is going wrong mm -hmm. which is why we call it holistic nutrition right yes yeah. I know a lot of times especially in Western medicine you go to the doctor and you say say I have erectile dysfunction okay so you get Viagra or whatever they're prescribing these days but it's literally only one system that they're addressing and a lot of times things like that can cause issues in the rest of your system so you're taking one medication and then you start taking another medication for something else yeah and on and on and on they don't look at the system oh I shouldn't say all of them <laughs> most <laughs> as, as a general rule Western medicine doesn't look at this the body as a whole they're just they are compartmentalizing every yep. single issue and just prescribing or dealing with one thing at a time versus looking at it. Yeah. So everything. if you're a man and you're watching this, um, that is really, really important. So mm -hmm. again, looking at your cardiovascular system, thinking a little bit about the way you eat and the way you exercise, and that's mm -hmm. huge too. Especially if you're on cholesterol control drugs too. Yeah. Cholesterol statins. control drugs, I'm pretty sure that it's actually listed as a side effect on their inserts because cholesterol is the backbone for all of your hormones. You need healthy cholesterol levels to be, for your body to be able to create hormones. Yeah. So if you are taking medication to lower your cholesterol, yeah. then your body is not gonna have cholesterol to be able to manufacture the hormones properly. So yeah, totally. So yeah, um, that's huge. Yeah. So once again, that's cardiovascular system though, right? Like making sure you're taking care of your cardiovascular system and there are 100% natural remedies for mm -hmm. dealing with both things. Yeah, definitely. Oh, the toxins in the liver. That's another yes. big one um, yes, yes, that yes, can yes. cause hormonal imbalance. And just to throw a good example out there, uh, women, if you are past your menopausal uh, age, and you're still having symptoms of like hot flashes or like night sweats, that's a huge sign that you need to decongest that liver because your liver mm -hmm. will essentially hold on to those toxins. They'll also be stored in fatty tissue in your body too. Um, and if you're not cleansing your liver and removing even just like the environmental toxins, Absolutely. then they're getting stored there and they're creating those problems. Your liver can't even function properly and deal with all the new stuff that it's coming at every day. We live so. in a very toxic world. We really do. <laughs> Sad to say, but we really do. Yeah, it's yeah. I know it's it, it is very toxic, but yeah. Um, and of course, there's also things like candida and uh, that yeah. throws off hormones. Yeah. So candida. A lot, um, if you don't know, candida is a fungus naturally occurring in our intestinal tract. It's supposed to be there. However, it feeds off of sugar, and so with putting things like 
you know, all those carbs and the pasta and the bread and the donuts and the and cookies the pastries and, the pastries and, the pastries and, buns. and the coffee. Once again, and coffee. coffee. Yeah. I hate to come back yeah. to coffee all the time, but dairy these, products. Dairy products. These are all yeah. things that are going to feed candida. So you get a fungus overgrowth in your system. Um, you can get yeast infections. You can get toenail fungus. You can get yeah. um, eczema and psoriasis, or just skin issues in general. Bloating, like bloating, uh, yes. protruding abdomen. Yeah. Yeah, um, but also like mental fog. Yeah, and sleep problems, sleepiness. And yeah, because it, it basically throws off all of your systems. Yeah. So that's a huge one too. Yeah, I feel like that's conditions. a whole other. Like we could do a whole other video maybe, on that. Maybe probably. we should. Maybe next yeah. maybe we will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next yeah. video. Um, other medications too: birth control. Um, SSRIs, oh yeah. We're gonna talk about birth control for all you young ladies watching. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. Huge yeah. Form. Yeah, there's so many, like, there's so many better ways, I feel like, to take control of your own body. And I'm not saying that, like, you know, every every girl shouldn't be on birth control because, you know, it has its time and place. But you have to keep in mind that, you know, if you are a young female and you're wanting to on birth control or you are already on it, like, you're basically putting hormones into your body. So it's, it's creating this different way of your body's natural function. Your body wants to reproduce and it wants to, it wants you to have your period every month. So when you're putting those hormones into your body, um, you're creating a different, whole different system for your body and doing birth control alone can lead to things like candida, like Jamie was saying, um, it can lead to a low libido. It can lead to, you know, even further problems with acne, weight gain. Weight gain yeah. Uh, just like sure. feeling like lethargic overall and I can speak from experience on this because I used to be on birth control for probably about seven years of my life uh, as a young you like teenager it, young right? adult. and I came off of it and I know this is like a, maybe a personal thing that some people would consider but I'm really an open book so I'll tell my story to anybody <laughs> that wants to hear really um, but I came off birth control probably about three years ago now and honestly huge difference like I didn't even know that you could naturally like control your own fertility and Jamie was actually the one that I was talking to and that was like, hey, like, do you know, you know what you're know. doing? And I'm like, no, I really don't know what I'm doing. Like, I just, I've just been doing this for so long. Like, I don't, I don't know any other way. And so I stopped it. And there was like definitely a big chunk of time where my body had to like readjust and like, <laughs> it had to, yeah, yeah, it was like, what do I do now that I'm not getting like this hormone every day? Like, I, I have to go ahead, kind of go back to my normal ways. And it does take time to balance it out. But um, that's a big thing. I just want to say, like, if you, again, if you are a young girl and you're watching this, uh, or you know, or anybody, if you're taking birth control, there are other ways that you can manage your fertility without having to put hormones in your body. So there's fertility awareness method. There's your body naturally wants to follow a cycle. It does. That's, that's why it's called a menstrual cycle because it goes through. Yes. This. Um, which actually go with the moon phases and all of that, which yeah. is a whole other talk as well. Yeah. Um, but if, and if you're not following those phases, if that's the reason you're going on birth control is because your cycle is not normal and is not going through its regular cycles, that is just a hormone issue as well. So you can deal with that without going on birth control through natural methods. And then you're also you get to skip going on birth control and causing all of these other problems. Yeah, exactly. So you don't have to put the extra estrogens in your body or, no. or steroids. No, you totally don't. Into your body to yeah. create more problems, especially in the long run. If yeah. You eventually want to come off. And that's like me. Like, I knew eventually in the long run, like, I'm going to want to have children one day, and I don't want to be dealing with all of this, like, as, you know, to just to add to that stress, you know? And, and yeah, it's just, there are definitely other options, and I think it's really important to know that there are other options. You don't just have to, you know, go on birth control right away, you know, do some research and see, you know, see what else there is out there. So I think we're going to get into ways that you can yeah. balance your hormones now. So things that you can do that are going to boost your libido, get you feeling kind of back on track and sleeping better through the night maybe. Um, yeah. So we're going to talk about all that. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, as we mentioned, one of the first things that we talk about is adrenals. So nourishing your adrenals, making sure that they're up to snuff. Um, one of our favorite products for this is AdrenaSense. Oh, awesome. um, it's got it's essentially an adaptogenic herb mix so it's those herbs like I mentioned with the licorice earlier that helps you yeah. nourish your adrenals they rebalance um, its hormones yeah. they can help with recovery for like after exercise because yeah. once again exercise as much as it's awesome for you it's still a form of stress on the body yeah so because they're managing your stress response 
you can have better recovery after exercise. Yeah. Um, you can sleep better. Yeah. You can and the on the subject of adaptogens, this mm-hmm. is another yes. huge one. Um, Maca powder is amazing. It, and it also tastes awesome. It tastes it's really good. Bonus. It tastes like caramel, <laughs> like something. Yeah, I don't even know how to describe it. I think, I think my favorite description of Maca is earthy butterscotch. This is what it looks like. So it has like the butterscotch flavor, but without the real sweetness to it. Yeah. So it's awesome with chocolate. Yeah. It's awesome with coffee. It's yes. awesome with those like dense flavors. Yes. Um, I think we're going to be making a maca chocolate bar chocolate or something bark. fun for Valentine's for Day. Valentine's so you can Day. come taste that. Yeah, but yeah, maca is fantastic for boosting your libido, um, functioning as that adaptogen, and kind of resetting the stress hormone, giving you energy too. Um, if you're not fond of the powder, we also have it by the way of capsules or liquid too. Uh, but the powder is awesome. Like you can throw it in the smoothie and it tastes and fantastic. The cool thing about maca is. Um, if you can have it as a food or as a supplement, yes, yeah. so you can take it either way if you like it. But it actually balances every single one of the body's hormones, so mm-hmm. it's not necessarily just the adrenal hormones or just the sex hormones or yeah. anything like it's that. Every, it's every single hormone in your body will help be helped with maca. Yeah, so it's a cool one. Yeah, it's very good. And this, I wanted to talk yeah. about this because this is actually um, what I used when I was coming off of birth control and I was trying to balance my cycles. Um, this is a fantastic product. Again, if you are a young woman, you can also take this if you are on birth control and you're you're still your hormones still aren't balanced and you're feeling like you're still having really heavy periods. Um, and things like that. But this worked amazing for me. It's just basically uh, a nice blend of things like milk thistle too that help to kind of keep your liver detoxing, getting rid of those bad estrogens. Um, there's also calcium glucurate, uh, indole 3 carbonyl. Those are like two huge ones for proper like estrogen balance in the body. Um, broccoli sprout powder, again, really great for the liver. Turmeric extract. It's just, it's a really great formula. So speaking of yeah. liver though, I'm also going to bring in this one. A lot of times when your hormones are out of whack it's because your liver can be out of whack too because your liver is one of the main sites that help to do the initiating of um, making hormones as well as detoxifying them so if your liver is bunged up with all of the wonderful things from our world from our toxic toxic world (laughs) um, doing a liver cleanse uh, with hormone therapy is incredibly important this is one of our favorites the super thistle yeah Um, it's got stuff for doing both the phase one and phase two detox of the liver, but it also has nutrients for supporting liver health as well. So it's a well-rounded Yeah, product. and I just want to say, I took this uh, after I came back from Mexico on my honeymoon and like, you know, of course, drinking and like eating every day and your liver just kind of is like Wah! all over the place. And I started taking that because I wasn't sleeping through the night. Like I was waking up at three in the morning, like every day thinking like it was time to wake up because like my liver was so congested and I was so stressed out. I started doing this um, and I I continued it for about I want to say I, I was probably like 20 days and like phenomenal results so your liver is it's huge yeah 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 absolutely yeah um we also have the menosense which obviously is for women going through menopause but same idea it has herbs for um for balancing yeah mm-hmm. uh, vaginal dryness yeah. night sweats um mm-hmm. the low libido uh I can, I can name them yeah. a bunch. <laughs> Basically everything that goes with menopause. Yeah. Yeah. And then we also have uh, one for men, of course. Yeah. And this is specifically libido, but there's also male energy. Male that energy, yeah. is by um, Brad King's line as well, which helps um, balance the testosterone, yeah. actually. And this one is specifically for libido, so it's yeah. low. And on the subject of libido, libido let's, bring in, let's bring in the big guns. Big guns. <laughs> okay, hold on. No, this one... These are two others for balancing. So we have the Don Kwe combo by the St. Francis line. St. Francis is one of my favorites because I like herbs mm-hmm. um, and tinctures. Tinctures are a really great way to get herbs into your body really fast. Yeah. So um, the Don Kwe combo for period problems of pretty much any sort. Um, and the Vitex combo for menopause. Yeah, and Vitex is also really great if you're trying to uh, get pregnant too. Um, mm-hmm. If you're a young lady, obviously, like if you're going through menopause, obviously it's not going to do that. But if you're a young <laughs> lady and you're wanting to get pregnant, uh, Vitex is actually really good. I think there's for... actually Vitex in yeah, this one as I think well there might be. in the Dawn Play combo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought there would be, but Vitex on its own is a great one. Yeah, but if you're trying to get um, pregnant. Yeah, but there's also uh, like sage in here, which is amazing. Motherwort. Motherwort is a fantastic herb. 
especially if you're a new mother. Yeah. I'm just throwing that out there. But anyways. Yeah. Okay. Big guns. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we do sell a lot of alternatives for uh, natural lubricants. Like if you're finding, uh, again, if you're in menopause and you're finding yourself really dry, a lot of lubricants out there can have a lot of like toxins. It happens a lot too after women have babies. Yeah. They okay. have a lot of t- hard time sometimes having a hard time with vaginal dryness. So yeah. it's definitely not just a menopausal yeah. woman thing. So um, these ones are both like, yeah, and these are both like water based and like paraben free and all of that fun stuff. And this, this guy, guy has a bit more. This yeah. guy actually, the Cala Gel by St. Francis. I don't really know where I'm pointing this, but hopefully you guys can yeah. see it. Um, this one actually helps to rebuild the vaginal walls as well. So if you, especially for women in yeah. menopause who are having um, that little bit of breakdown of the yeah. vaginal tissue, that can help with the rebuilding of it. So it's yeah. a super cool one, but Fantastic. it's also a loop. So yeah. yeah, at the same time. And of course, if you are going with oh natural oh natural <laughs> there's also things like coconut oil oh, yeah. or shea butter or cacao butter or yeah. things like that that you can lose use for lubricants yeah just be sure because it is an oil so you know like make sure you mm-hmm. just be careful with that wash it whatever you need yeah. <laughs> yes keep one stains. yeah <laughs> And it's yeah. probably best that you just keep it in the bedroom. Yeah, don't bring it back to the kitchen. Don't bring it back to the bedroom. Oh, obviously. <laughs> or take a little bit out just for the bedroom. Or yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also important, just little things, like making sure that you keep up with your vitamin D levels. So yeah. that you have a healthy system in general. Yeah. Um, probiotics. Probiotics are really important. Yeah. 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 Making sure that you have, you know, like good bacteria to support your digestive system, support your immune supporting your mood mm-hmm. like all of those things or we do have the vaginal support ones too so yeah. if you get vaginosis or yeast infections or anything like that then yeah the vaginal support there's natural is. alternatives instead mm-hmm. of like canestin or monostat exactly or those, yeah. yeah which is key things. yeah the good bacteria put right into your vagina so yeah. that you're not putting yucky things in it's just helping to push the bad things out. out yeah mm-hmm. and yeah like other foods that you can have that are going to like boost libido so we talked about maca but also um raw cacao yeah this is like chocolate i mean come on like you can't not love raw chocolate um, <laughs> so you can make a bark with this really easily you can melt it with some coconut oil um you and can maca. Yeah, and maca, and make that into a bark. We're probably going to, that's exactly, I think, what we're going to do. <laughs> Other libido foods, like yeah. goji berries. Goji berries. Pumpkin, pumpkin seeds, seeds are yeah. a great one, especially um, for men. Pumpkin seeds, a lot, um, once again, coming back to, like, the whole impotence and stuff. Yeah. Uh, zinc. Yeah. Right? Zinc is so important for um, males' sexual health. Yeah. And pumpkin seeds yeah. are a good source of zinc. Yeah. So that's a great one. Yeah, they're a wonderful, like, as well as all of the fats and sort of stuff, too. Yeah. So making sure you have good fats yeah yeah for sure um yeah like garlic is another really good one that helps to improve blood flow um so again helping with proper circulation for men especially and women too like both. and ginger yeah and ginger, ginger is yeah. a great one for circulation ginger is amazing yeah um what other aphrodisiac foods like s- strawberries too are one that i know is is also really good like that red kind of sweetness to it yeah. kind of similar to goji berries oh bee crystals bee crystals, bee crystals yeah crystals that's another one. one yeah so um, that also is really good. oxygenating. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. even it double beets too. Like you can you can eat beets obviously, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the crystals are fun for just adding into things like smoothies yeah. and yeah. yogurt, or they make things pink. So if yeah, you want something healthy for yeah. Valentine's Day? You and can I think make a, some sort of pink. Yeah, well, cake we're probably pink. gonna do something pink on Valentine's Day. Yeah, so we'll like a beet latte or something, something fun like that. Something yeah, like that, or, that would yeah. be great. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. beets help with oxygenation. So once again, yeah. getting. Um, getting your blood flow going. Yeah. Um, and I mean, aphrodisiacs in general, a lot of times they're related to saying it gets your libido going. It yeah. Gets, it gets you going. It's like yeah. they're like sex foods. Yeah. But really, all they are is energizing. Foods. Yeah, energizing foods so that make you kind they of get your system yeah. revved up yeah. and going in general. So, I mean, if you're eating all of these things, yeah. And it's okay to not have sex. And yeah, them. yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> they're just good for you in general. Yeah. Anyways, so they're um, yeah, they're energizing foods. So just to kind of get you up yeah. and going. And yeah, I think that's pretty. We I mean, pretty much touched it all. I think so. Yeah. Thanks everybody um, for watching this video. It's probably pretty long, but 
Yeah. <laughs> we covered Let a lot. Let us know if in the comments if you have any more questions or anything we can um, help to answer from there. Yeah. Or if you have a suggestion for our next topic that you would like covered that we can talk about and mm -hmm. recommend some stuff. Um, just as a covering our butts note, not all of these supplements are okay for everybody. Of course, you have to make sure that, you know, check with whoever, yeah. um, if you're on any medications or if you have any health issues in general, um, you can also come and talk to us. We're obviously, we're not doctors, but we can um, recommend yeah. and talk to you about your own health and see where you are and recommend a product that might be best for you. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So yeah, thanks guys for watching. We really, really appreciate it. And like Jamie said, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, yeah, and maybe, you know, following this, like kind of we're almost getting close to spring, maybe we'll do like some kind of detoxing, like, you know, video or something like that next, but maybe yeah. it'd be cool. If that sounds good, you can just, yeah, like the video or comment down below. Yeah. Yes. So mm -hmm. thanks guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.